What's up guys, today I'm going to show you how to use the dynamic scaling feature on the Raspberry Pi and Raspberry MC. Before I actually do this, I'm going to start by saying if you're running this off an SD card, it will cause issues. It probably will cause your SD to corrupt and won't be usable and you have to do the whole process all over again. Um, I've been running this for two hours. You can see in my information, I'm running this off a USB. Two hours, 12 minutes, I've had no corruptions, no problems, no nothing. So if you're running it off a USB, you should be fine. Um, if you're doing it off an SD card, seriously, just don't do it. It'll mess it all up. So there's a good reason to use a USB, right? I'm just going to show you my programs, Raspberry settings, what I've actually got set so far. Um, you have to turn this off, and you have to use advanced overclocking. Now... If you used Raspberry MC before the um, update, it used to stay on 800 MHz in the CPU the whole time. The original clock of the Raspberry Pi is 700. You can see that I've got mine set to 840, 350 for the core, 353 for the GPU and 400 for the overclock. But the good thing about the dynamic overclock is the fact that it's not stuck on those frequencies. Right now, it's probably lower, and I can show you that. So, if I just twist my camera over to my laptop over here. Okay, to use the CPU frequency, or to look at it, you use this command, which I will put in the description. It's kind of long, so I'm just going to use it there. You can see there, right now, it's clocked at 700. Not at a static frequency of... 8, 400 or 800 like a, the original non-dynamically overclocked Raspberry Pis and Raspberry MC setups are and if I show you, I'm not going to turn my camera around but what I'm going to do is put is open Raspberry MC settings and quickly look at this at the same time you should see it dynamically overclocked ok that was a massive fail, I'm going to do it again there you go, yeah, you can see it. You can see that, can you see that? What All I did there was open Raspberry settings on my, uh, on the setup there. So you can see from 700, when it opened the settings, it went to 8, 400. Okay guys, I'll show you that dynamic overclocking and decreasing again. Um, if we look now, we can see it's running at 700. If I go ahead and open the settings and catch this right, we should see it dynamically overclock to give us more speed. I did not catch it right. We'll try again. There you can see the last number pulled up as I opened the settings was 8400. If we do it again, it's clocked back down now as it's already opened back down to 700 so the dynamic overclocking is working um, which is great you know there's loads of uh, cool things you can do with that I'm actually going to show you how to do it now um, firstly you'll need root so hit that let me see if you can see here Okay, now you hit. I'm going to put all these in the descriptions, but I think you can see that there. So you don't know boot config text. If you're already running it, what you'll see in yours. Oops, out of focus. What you'll see in yours in between GPU frequent. Come on, focus camera. It really doesn't want to focus in on that, does it? Yeah, what you'll see in between GPU frequency and disabled overscan is force turbo equals one. If you delete that line, it will use dynamic overclocking and you'll have to set your dynamic overclock in the Raspberry MC settings on the actual Raspberry MC itself. Um, okay, we're going to move back over now. Um, if we go hit back into the settings, what this dynamic overclock allows is, I've done a really modest overclock here. 
you can really push this up all of these up you can push them miles up um people have hit a gig and 500 on that and 500 on that because it doesn't always stick to that frequency when it goes up it quickly uses it and then scales back down and that therefore it doesn't get too hot or anything so at the moment mine's probably running at 700 if you go to system info um you can see the temperatures now 44 degrees um that's not very high i mean i've seen it hit 50 55 the dynamic overclock is really going to help you in temperature and all that stuff so yeah dynamic overclocking is awesome but like i said it is a risky procedure um if you're using an sd card it is experimental anyway so if you have problems don't blame me um yeah that's it i'll see you guys later have fun with it